if I wanted to do that, why don't we just go to Croatia? I said, what? Croatia? I'm, I'm a really outspoken person and, and just I feel like I could be my authentic self here. Uh, you want some uh, Domaša glass, but you can get it. Uh, you want some modern glass, but you can get that. Where I actually came here to find my identity. Good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, my name is uh, Paul Bradbury. Uh, I've been living here for 20 years. I run Total Croatian News and uh, we're looking at uh, Croatia through the eyes of foreigners who live here and their experiences and uh, how they see Croatia. And we thought we'd start tonight with uh, a look at a trend which not many people are talking about, but it's real, returnees. People from the diaspora who are coming back to Croatia for its safety, its lifestyle, its authentic experiences. They're coming back, they're staying, and they're loving it. And tonight we have four guests from uh, Australia, Canada, and Austria. And they're all living in Zagreb, and they've all agreed to come on the show and tell us a little bit about themselves. Uh, we have Eugene from uh, Australia, Mariana from Canada, Andrian from Australia, and Mario from uh, Austria. So let's get into it. So Mariana, first of all, can you tell us your returnee story in a couple of minutes? Sure. So um, as Paul mentioned, my name is Mariana. Uh, I was born in Zadar, and as a baby, my family moved to Canada, uh, Mississauga, just outside of Toronto. Uh, I grew up there, so born, uh, so I was raised, uh, went to uh, elementary school, high school, started two years of university there and decided, okay, it's time to come back. Uh, so I dropped out of university and I enrolled in university here, first in Dubrovnik. I finished four years there. Uh, and then moved to Zagreb for my master's, uh, after which just about three months after graduating, I started working uh, at a company called uh, Procter & Gamble. And um, I'm still working there now, uh, eight and a half years later. Uh, so that would mean that my journey is 14 years now living in Croatia. Uh, I was living about 20 years in Canada. So in six more years, it will be equaled out. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to be here and whenever anybody asks me do you plan to go back the answer is pretty much always no and why is that uh, the reason is, is just in general the lifestyle for me um, for me I, I just I'm a social person um, I love kind of calling people up randomly hey let's go for a coffee or something along those lines um, I'm, I'm a really outspoken person and and just I feel like I could be my authentic self here uh, and that's that's the biggest thing for me and Croatia realistically if you have a decent job um, it's an amazing place to live because you have everything realistically in the palm of your hands for such a small country it's rich with so many things okay Andrian um, I'm delighted to announce that your mother's watching so uh, <laughs> so no pressure but if you could tell your story again succinctly. with the mothers <laughs> Uh, oh boy. Uh, hi, I'm Andrian. I'm from Sydney, Australia. Korenin sum iz Škabrnje u Sjeverne Dalmacije. I've been here. Yeah, that's right, Škabrnje. Uh, I've been here for uh, four years since the the Russian World Cup. Uh, I a couple of years ago I wanted to become a digital nomad and I wanted to live somewhere where I could be a little bit more free. And I had uh, three choices, you know, between Southeast Asia, South America, or Croatia and I decided to look at uh, into Croatia. Uh, prior to that, I looked heavily into the tech sector here and I saw a lot of up and coming uh, tech companies. Uh, and then I decided to make the jump. After working for a uh, couple of months as a freelance data scientist, I found a really nice uh, tech company here in Croatia. I've been working them for the last two years. Uh, and uh, I have a more optimistic view on Croatia's tech sector and I really think that we can make an impact. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing better than being all professional and courteous uh, on the corporate side and then after works we become about as um, Croatian as can be, uh, putting it very politically correct then. Did you have a, a seismic moment in, in Nien one evening when you were partying a little bit and then you realised that's why Croatia? Yeah, uh, I realised, yeah, Croatia, why not? It was, it was basically, uh, I mean for a moment like that it needs to be something big, it has to be something very emotional, but it was basically the World Cup, we're all there, Trg Banjelacic, 
Uh, no one's taken a shower in hours. Nema šans da ćeš naći WC. But you're all there. Uh, you know, kad te prijatelj zove, kao, ko si ti? I'm the one wearing the hrvatski dress. Kao, okay, you and 10,000 other people. Uh, but then you realize, you know, you're all, you know, everyone there is your neighbor. Everyone there is going to be there for the next, you know, 20, 30 years. That's pretty much what happened. Like the people that I met there that summer, I've been good friends with ever since. Yeah. And that was the decision to say. I realized like there is a strong tech sector. There's really good people here. As Mariana said, the lifestyle is really, really good. Uh, you want some uh, domaša glas, but you can get it. Uh, you want some modern glass, but you can get that. You want to go out for beers. Uh, and if you want some, um, you know, like uh, world-class companies, you also have that here too. So, okay. yeah. Maria, I mean, everybody here is emigrating to Germany, Austria, and other countries, and you were born in Austria, exactly. but so you decided to come to Croatia. Tell us why. Well, I was born in Austria, raised there, I finished faculty there, and uh, both of my parents are Croatian, so uh, the connection to Croatia was uh, huge. Uh, first of all, uh, because of the nearness, so I spent a lot of time in uh, Croatia, the whole summer, all the holidays and so on. Um, the mentality that you will learn at home, uh, the culture f from your parents. So, uh, the thing is I always felt Croatian, but I lived in Austria, so when I, you come here over the summer and uh, people, you tell people I'm Croatian, they're like, no, you're Austrian, but my parents are from Croatia, yeah, but you were born there. I'm like, damn it. And then I come to Austria and um, they also tell you you're Austrian, you know? And uh, that was really hard for me. It was mm. like um, a struggle where I actually came here to find my identity. And uh, that's the reason like, uh, I did that step and okay. I found it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Eugene, the only person I've ever met that's returned to this country twice in 30 years. Congratulations. Mm. Okay. Tell us how that happened. Yeah, uh, well, I'm a serial killer uh, returning. Sorry. Uh, so it's my second time to have returned uh, here to the place of the crime. Uh, the first time was in 91 um, when I was uh, 18 year old, um, volunteered for the war effort, funny enough, uh, not fighting, more like translating, uh, things like that. That led to a job as a journalist, so I was for over 15 years I was a foreign correspondent for the Associated Press, covering uh, the wars, politics um, and sports, a lot of sports around the world even. Um, and so I loved Croatia, fell in love with it, finished university here. Um, and then 2009, when the global financial crisis happened, um, I'd already stopped working as a journalist and started doing some other things and um, I felt, felt like a bit of a washed up rock star, you know, the lifestyle that you live in Croatia. It's, it's, all, it's very um, outdoorsy, a lot of fun, uh, socialising. I uh, felt like there was, I was missing something and being born in Australia, I'd never worked there, I'd never been an adult in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went back to Australia. Uh, and I was there for seven years. In that time, I got uh, got married, um, two little children. My wife's Australian, Ukrainian, and um, I somehow started devising a way of going back to Croatia because I felt like life was more more um, substantial. Uh, so we're working, doing the run of the mill things that you do in the West. Um, that lifestyle, I could see the future, and it was it was very um, standard, very. Um, predictable and I was starting to miss uh, this crazy, crazy life here in Croatia. Um, convinced my wife, um, I kept saying that we should go somewhere like Panama, Costa Rica, mm -hmm. something uh, near the equator, great weather, that would be safe, that would be, you know, a little bit different to this boring life that we're living. And then she said, well, if I wanted to do that, why don't we just go to Croatia? I said, what? Croatia? Uh, and Good so she couldn't take. I, yeah, I like that, you know. She couldn't take that back anymore. Yeah, right. uh, I'd already packed the bags by the time she realised what she said. And now we've been here five years already. So my kids are in mm. Croatian school. And uh, did they speak uh, Croatian before they came? No, no, no. no, no. My wife uh, still knows maybe. Uh, I don't even know if she's learnt more than five words. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, she likes it. Everybody likes it. Um, we have a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, that are from the diaspora or foreigners, uh, so we speak a lot of English, she feels comfortable. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. so 
you know, hopefully this I'm not coming again, back again. You yeah, know, yeah. So twice right. is enough. <laughs> I don't know they let you in the third time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, Mariana, I mean, th this whole thing about, obviously, diaspora, th there's the identity thing that, that Maria talks about, how you're, you're Canadian and you're Croatian. Mm -hmm. um, how, I mean, how does, like, making the change from Canada to Croatia is a big step. What was the reaction of your community back home? And how did you, I mean, how did you deal with it? Because obviously you're, you're leaving a, a big comfort zone to go into something that's exciting. You're, 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 you're patriotic about it. but. How, how was that move and, and what were the sort of um, strings that were being pulled and stuff? Um, so a, a little bit different to Maria's story is that in Canada, I'm the Croatian. In Croatia, I'm the Canadian. Right. So I'm nobody's. <laughs> right. um, and uh, so, so back there, anyone that, let's say, wasn't Croatian um, knew that that was my passion and that they were just waiting for it to happen eventually um, just because maybe it was because when we moved back uh, when we moved to Canada it was supposed to be short term um, but it ended up being much longer uh, so everyone knew I, I had this desire and my sister was the first one to make the jump uh, and, and move to Croatia so I was just following her footsteps so everyone was really supportive I would say because it was more or less coming down down the line um, my father extremely supportive because that was his ultimate dream mm. my mother a little bit less um, she knew that kind of I'm not a big risk taker so she was like I will be back in two weeks to so be crying to come back home plus she likes having all her kids and, and everything in one place so another one is leaving the nest um, and in terms of my friends really great support and the ones that have been there um, the support from the beginning are still good friends and I still keep in touch with the ones that matter um, some visit even like even non Croatians mm. uh, visit uh, so um, so yeah so I, I had a lot of support it was more so the people here when I came here where they were like from Canada what are you doing coming back here yeah that was uh, still in the jobs yeah <laughs> You can't win, can you? You, you, you yeah. can make you crazy, and then you're sitting in the jobs, and there's, you know, it's just like, yeah. <laughs> jobs that they don't want to do. Probably. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it's like, what, what are you doing here? Are you insane? You have yeah. a Canadian passport, use it. I'm like, yeah. I use it to travel, but I'm staying here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated by the diaspora in Australia uh, <laughs> for, um, for reasons because. Are you about to throw me a Sydney United question? <laughs> no, but uh, let me think of a Sydney United. No, I'm not going to. But um, tell us about tell us about how uh, your decision to come back in your community. How how was that? Sure. Okay. So um, Croatians in in Australia, there are uh, infamous stories of people who make a big song and dance about <laughs> leaving, big going away party, and then they go, and then a couple of years later they come back, and then those who can't handle the heat come back a second time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, <laughs> oh, that's really getting good. real, getting real. Uh, none of these softball questions, no. But basically, um, I decided uh, not to tell anyone that I was coming in. Uh, I didn't want a big going away party. I didn't want you know none of that. I didn't even post any posts on Facebook. Nothing for the first year that I was here. I have a going away party every year. Yeah. I did the same. Did none of that, and then um, mm. I. I uh, so you're afraid if you come back before a year or three or fifteen. It, 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 is it that fear that if you come back and it doesn't work, it's and like then you're like, a loser, bro? Yeah. yeah, failure. Really? Yeah. For me, I remember like I was uh, talking to everyone. Like the moment I decided I will live in Zagreb, I talked with anyone, uh, with everyone about mm. it, just like to make my wish come true. You know, if mm. I say it more <laughs> often. <laughs> And, uh, so fulfilling prophecy. Yes, and then at the end, like they call me from the work. Uh, hey, you got the job. Like uh, you, you should start in one week. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is getting real. It's real right now. Tears were coming. I was yeah. so afraid suddenly. Uh, I did uh, came together with people, like uh, saying, okay, let's meet in the pub. Um, I am going to work in Zagreb, but you know, I don't know. Maybe I just go for a week. Who knows? Let's just have a beer. Just like to have that open space in case I come back. Yeah. No I set myself up to fail. I, 
I when I came, I said I'm I'm going to an American university, so it's easier with my diploma to get back to Canada. When I was applying for jobs, I'm applying for international companies, so that that way maybe I can transfer easier, or at least they'll recognize it on my CV. So I just kind of always was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just in case. Uh, so I was always prepared to to fail. My my and plus dropping out of university once, I was like, all right, I've already let my parents down once. Twice, no big deal. <laughs> I, I was prepared too because I also looked like that I still have insurance there. Like if I come back, uh -huh. you know, yeah. um, I had an apartment where I could come back, uh, so I had a lot of backup. I finished the faculty there. I just lost my job, so it was not like I was leaving something. Yeah. Um, just in case, you know. But did, did did you have moments like like down moments here where you thought I want to go back and? No. Never, no, no. Right, right, right. never, uh, like maybe only the first day because I okay. felt so like poor, you know, like, oh my gosh, I don't have an apartment, I'm living here in someone's apartment on the couch, uh, I don't even know how work is going to be, yeah. and after the first working day, when I felt like good energy, talking to people, it was like I never ever looked back. Mm. So. I always thought about it as, um, you know, you watch all those movies, and it's always about adventure and like, gambling and you only got yes. one life yeah. and so I didn't really look at Croatia so much as this romantic uh, grandmother grandfather you know Croatian flag all this stuff I didn't really the first time yeah second time like you know if, I, if it's not a great place to live and it's not much if it's not more fun than Australia then yeah. I don't want to hear about yeah. it I don't yeah. care if it's Croatia anymore right yeah. and so thinking like you know what what could it be if it goes pear-shaped if it goes bad, you just go back, right? But some people don't have that confidence to say, well, you know what, I gave it a shot, you know, like, so what, I'm back, mm. and all right, maybe um, I'm cleaning very... toilets now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but like, yeah. I took a very different approach. I wanted to go, I wanted to start off in the worst place possible. I wanted to know how bad it could get. So I called a friend of mine, I go, look, listen, I'm coming to, to Zagreb. It's a guy that I only met once or twice. Um, and I go, uh, I need a place to, to stay because what are you looking for? I go, I want the cheapest place possible in Zagreb. because are you sure? Because yeah, sure. So, it's Dubrava, didn't you? It's, uh, Dubrava is a fantastic part, thank no, you very much. I was, my... Dubrava is, because they're watching this. Um, so, so I, cool was one, in, I was in, uh, I was in Rudesh. That's where uh, I live, for... I just want to say, but okay. But, but have, you. You have you ever lived in a 1,000 corner a month apartment? No. Do you know what you get for 1,000 corners a month? It's fantastic. It's fantastic. You get a nice single bed. You don't want to see what the mattress is made out of. And when you open up the windows, you have this beautiful view of the neighbor's brick wall in front of you. Like no sunlight whatsoever. So I stayed there for about six months uh, before I learned the city as well as I could. But that's when I realized this is as bad as it gets. It's not that bad because you go out and get the coffee. <laughs> this, isn't, this really isn't that bad. And you're, you know, single male, like it's fine. The minutes, man. And then, you have to uh, do steal something. <laughs> And then, um, then after that, you know, came and now I live in a place called Kvartrich, which is fantastic, great bars, cafes and stuff like that. Um, so I was like, you know, by coming in, I set the bar extremely low, yeah. went as cheap as possible, realized it's really not that bad. And um, then once you get through that, it's, it's, it's fine. Like there's no, yeah. doesn't matter how bad it gets here, it's still like, it's still not worth jumping back to Australia. I guess we, we are lucky that we have a little bit of, a backup plan always that we have a place to fall back on like I, I love I love Canada so I, I won't like I love it living here and I could never imagine myself moving back to Canada but um, my dad says it the best um, Canada is a great stepmother but Croatia is my mother so okay. we're, we're lucky I guess to have that I back understand. Plan. I'd hate to get back to Canada I've never been no, there. I don't want to go there either, but like, I, you know. <laughs> I mean, that'd be pretty bad. What about, um, what about... Sorry, Christmas at summertime in Australia. Right? <laughs> what about perceptions of Croatia before you came and the reality of what you found? Because um, obviously yeah. there's a, in, 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 in diaspora communities, there's a, there's a picture of perception of what it's like here. And I think growing the up problem is, I think the, the problem is, in diaspora, when you think about it, I, I'd probably say that most people are from Herzegovina and Bosnia. Um, in Australia? I, I'd probably I'd say probably everywhere. Probably say everywhere, yeah. 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 Um, maybe if you're talking about after World War II, straight after, yeah. or, or even prior to that, then I'd say the islands or Croatia, Dalmatia, mm. yeah. you know, like pre-war sort of. Uh, but after war, 60s, there's probably more Bosnia and Herzegovina than, than Croatia, right? 
um, so that when you're in diaspora, you're aware of, uh, what's that? oh yeah, your your daughter or son is going out with a head squat or with a damatinka or something like that. You go, oh, okay, you know, but haha, bila bolje de nash, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what happens is I felt in some way, um, uh, I guess, lucky that when I came to Croatian holidays with my parents, like, we'd go to Dalmatia and so I, I had cousins also in Zagreb. And so I got to know Zagreb, right? And Zagreb ended up being a really great place. And then Dalmatia, you know, what's not to like, uh, you know, in summer especially, so it's great. Uh, but then I had uh, friends from Australia that were from Bosnia or from Herzegovina. They would just go straight to, to, their, to their cellar. Mm. And so as a kid, or let's say you're like 10 and then you might be 12 or something, if your parents bring you to Croatia and you're in Herzegovina, what are you going to do, mate? Yeah. You can see rocks anywhere, you know? And, it's not really anything special. But, but even if you have Dalmatia too, they're only seeing Dalmatia. But well, especially if you're from the Zalaj, yeah. you know, you yeah. also it looks like Herzegovina basically. Yeah. But, uh, but what I mean is that uh, so I think that most of us had the impression of Croatia, you know, through songs and, and, and our parents being very uh, nationalistic, and so we, it's an ideal for us. Um, but whereas for me, my parents made it more about um, a better place or. A, possibly a better place to yeah. live, you know, like yeah. uh, for a lifestyle. Um, and I'm not sure, and I think that that still is probably a, 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 a fallacy in, in, in the diaspora that Croatia is this backward sort of yeah. balcony yeah. place when it's not, you know, Zagreb is like Central Europe. Yeah. You know? I, I, I mean, I mean I, especially during the pandemic, I, I think this feeling that Croatia is a safe place and it has this lifestyle I think these two things are really, really coming forward now. People, I, mean, I know you, like you, you're bringing up kids here. Yeah. I know probably ten Australian diaspora who've moved back to Croatia just to bring up their kids in yep. a safe place. And I think this is a really, really, really thing that people here don't really fully grasp the uh, the, the strength of that. And this is something that yeah. we can really we, yeah. we can really utilize. Me and Andre and are in a group, uh, and there's a hundred people, and so that's basically a hundred families. And, and I'd say the majority have kids. Yeah. yeah. There would be uh, uh, young young families, and you're right, man. Uh, the for a young family uh, bringing up kids in this age is yep. brilliant, and I think that the 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 uh, type um, of Croatian returning nowadays, and we, we mentioned it earlier, it's the people who who like more freedom. You know, mm. with this pandemic, you had a lot of people mm. who had no connection to Croatia returning beco- or coming to Croatia because they heard it was a soft touch. Uh, government with with uh, COVID, then you had uh, other Croatians who came to Croatia because they they couldn't believe that their governments were so uh, strict and totalitarian in a, in a way with their clamp down on on uh, on, on COVID. Um, and so that if you're a person who likes more freedom and you want to make the decision for your own family and and not have too much government control, mm. I think Croatia is a natural. Mm. And so most Croatians probably don't think that this government is very totalitarian but this government it's, it's almost like living in like the wild west the, the, there's not much police on the streets you don't see yes. anything that that, that has uh, the the um although, although I mean, I, and i was i was blown away by when the lockdown started and they announced that they were putting uh, you had to go to proper solicitor to go between uh, mm. optional optional mm. like overnight nobody objected and overnight there was yeah. a policeman there, and it was like they could have turned the internet off and we, we would have been back in the middle ages yeah. just like that only and, and i was Hugely impressed and hugely terrified by mm. how efficient that was. It was. Uh, it was. Well, we had the war, right? So yeah, uh, it yeah. wasn't the first time that we were. Yeah, sure. See, a lot of countries were very um, um, afraid of, of of things, but in Croatia, we had experienced probably the worst that could happen yeah. to, to uh, in your yeah. lifetime is a war and stuff. Yeah. So we had uh, those um, uh, um, going into shelters when, when the air raids were on and the other cities were bombed. So we were, we have this sort of trust in our government for some things. So that the you know it's, it's dangerous. Then when COVID came, okay, it's dangerous again. So listen yeah. to the government. Yeah. But if they abused it and they went too far, then you can see Croatians don't like to listen too much. That they yeah. they're suspicious of government because of communism and everything. Yeah. So at the beginning they were listening because oh, what is this thing COVID? You know mm. we could all be wiped yeah. out. But then when we realised, uh, yeah, you know, like uh, it's not as bad, or the government's lying, or there's there's inconsistencies, then people start to say, well, you know what, I'm going to have my own rules, right? I'm not even going to listen anymore. And then Croatian government obviously realised people are like that here, that 
they should have a soft touch because I don't think it would work. Yeah. Um, and that what made made it interesting to return to Croatia. Changing tack, so um, you've all come back. Um, how are you received by people here? Obviously, you have various degrees of language, um, uh, accents, um, cultural things. People think you're crazy. What was the what was the general like like Maria from uh, Well, concerning language, um, I don't really have an accent when I talk Croatian, uh, so people don't hear right away that I grew up in Austria. Um, so. For them it's really weird when I make a really obvious mistake um, and then, then they're like looking at me and if they don't know my background, uh, like why did you say it like this and so then I have to explain them and then ah, oh then you're talking really good Croatian, you know, mm -hmm. it's always the same. Um, so that was actually like the, the only thing that like came up. Um, but all the other things, like I had already friends here. Uh, while I lived in Austria, I came to Zagreb over weekends, you know, to party with my friends. I spent all my summers in Croatia, everything. So there was a really big connection. How was I received? Uh, well, if you want to make uh, a really good first impression, first day you arrive in Zagreb, they invited me to a place called Zlatni Medo, which is on Kalčičeva. And they go, oh, what beer do you want? They like ask me, what, what do you drink? I go, oh, yeah, I'll go, let's go for a good place to get some beers. Oh, it is La Di Medo, and the Konobar comes along, and goes, Podine, is what? And I go, like, how much no juja? And they all just turn around. Nothing <laughs> against the brand, it's just like you don't go the, the, to like the, the, the competitor's the, the, pub. There's a lot against the brand, but we'll, that's a separate, that's, that's that's a separate program. And then all of these guys who are like, you just came, that's like going to like a five star restaurant and ordering like. Shavapi. <laughs> Really bad shavapi or something like that. <laughs> and so they're like, who is this guy? But over time, like what happens is you... you the, the key to it is um, if you go out, if you learn all the songs, if you know how to sing, no, and that's if it. you know all the Croatian songs, that's that's yeah, yeah. that's gold. It's like, oh, alright, he's one of us. And, and did you know those growing up? No, I didn't know that at all. Right. And then, if you, can do, <laughs> and then if you can do the different accents, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like if you can do, like if you can imitate a Zagorac or a Dalmatinac yeah. or a you know, Slavonac or something like that. Yeah. They love that even more, if, especially if you do like, uh, add little bits of dialect, because then like they feel like, oh, okay, this guy isn't just a tourist. Yeah. But initially it's very easy, it's like, oh, this guy's just a tourist or whatever, but yeah. then once they see that you really do get, you really do get it, you really are here forever, they're a lot more open. And then once you par pass this threshold, they're mm. your friends for life. Is it, is it, was there like a moment of acceptance where like you, you come back and then suddenly you're now one of us? W was there a, did, did any of you feel that? <laughs> yes. Okay. My, I mean, my, my best friend, you know, uh, she would always joke with me like, oh, come on, you're a diaspora. No, no, you're, you're not Croatian all the time. I'm like, okay, uh, friend, I will move to Croatia. Okay, so I moved here. Oh, you're still not Croatian. You're not Croatian, you know, all the time. I tried to prove, uh, to prove her. She said, when you get the domovnica, then you will be. So I got the domovnica and I came, am I now a Croatian? And she said, yes, you are. Wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> Go on for you. I'll tell you the exact moment when you know you've been accepted by the locals. It's when they bitch about other diaspora. Teams. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, here's, here's whatever from America. It's like, Are you okay? They, they, You're they, from they, Australia. No, but yeah. they're, they're not even <laughs> they do that. It's like, oh, oh like, because um, a lot of the diaspora, oni preacha you vako, and they say, oh, no, yako loše preacha you hrvatski, and they just do that. And it's like, oh my god, did I used to sound like that? Yeah, he did a little bit like that. <laughs> Your accent's fixed up again. Okay. That's when you know you're accepted. The moment of acceptance as, as a Brit in Dalmatia, and it took me 13 years, is when you walk past the klupa, the bench, and they say, sit. Yeah. <laughs> it took me 13 years, but it was the biggest honour of my life to be <laughs> sit with the guys. I remember um, you know, when when Croatia played uh, Australia in the World Cup. 2-2, mm, wasn't it, Viduka? Uh, yeah, captain, exactly. Yeah. And, then, and then that team had probably about six or seven Croatians in the Australian team. And yeah. so, uh, and then my friends were going up there and then uh, my friends, uh, one of them uh, asked, so huge, you know, like, who are you going for? And then um, all the other Croatian friends, one of them smacked him across here. Who's he gonna go for? Pawn your nush. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's and, uh, the same like, thing I've got yeah. coming up now. Canada's yeah, playing Canada. the Oh, uh, right, 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 right. right. And, and? I, as soon as the draw, my phone was off the hook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a kogacic navijat, a kogacic. I'm like, 
ono, za Hrvatsku, naravno, kao, and then my Canadian friends call me, who can Canada, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and my brother said it perfectly, whoever's winning, that's what I'm yeah, cheering yeah, for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about food. I mean, food, um, you know, everyone talks about cro- Croatian food being the best in the world, and obviously it is, and stuff. Um, you all grew up in Croatian communities. Um, was there a big food shock when you came here? Um, is there a particular type of food that you crave here? Um, like punjana yeah. paprika or sarma, I guess, is the, is the ultimate. Punjana paprika. Really? Yeah. Punjana paprika oh, all the way. Huh? No, punjana paprika. I ate it, like it's my it's mom, it. she used it you know, as she lives like two hours apart, you know. Then uh, when I go and visit her, she gives me a lot of punjana paprika. Uh, and then I come to Zagreb and then I eat it for the whole week. And I realized like the fifth day you should not eat it anymore. Oh, it's, my it's freezer way is away. full of mama's punjana paprika. Yeah, really? Every too. time she comes, she makes like... Seriously, sarma. So, it's, it's, I mean, no. there's no contest. Oh, no mm-hmm. contest, man. Come on. Who's that amazing Dalmatia cartoonist? Uh, Tissia Platt. Titanic. Titanic. And she's got this it's like thing, that, yeah. and this is like a cinema Dan, <laughs> Dan Pet, you know, it's just like, you know, it's just like, you know, that's it. It's just great, fantastic. Um, I didn't know that Chawapi comes with the someone, you know? That was, that was a shock to me. Really? Really? Yeah. Did you, did you have Chawapis in, in Canada and yeah. Austria with someone? Yeah. Le- 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 it's yeah. like a Turkish thing, so we, we like in Australia, we're like... Kaimak was new like, to me though, like, it was always Ivar mm-hmm. when I was in Canada, but... Yeah, Kaimak, Kaimak. I don't even know Kaimak, man. That's mm-hmm. like, yeah. Kind Vegeta, do you use less Vegeta in Croatia now yes. than you did in the diaspora? Uh, Vegeta's part of the Croatian story, <laughs> but um, everybody's crazy about it in the diaspora, and I, I don't see it as much here in it's Croatia. I think it's because of it's one of those few <laughs> items that you can buy there, right? right? So there's that, Napolitanke, Chocolino, Chocolino, oh, Chocolino, Chocolino in the diaspora, they, they're nuts for it. Yes, so yes. It yeah, so that's probably, probably why, and it makes it different. Croatian. Mm. It's not pepper, it's not salt, it's not right. paprika or whatever. So what's your, what, what's your <laughs> if you cl- close your eyes and you think of Croatian, you think of food, what's the one thing that you crave? Punya and paprika. What, when I crave? <laughs> uh, Croatian uh, stuff? Fine, fine, yeah, Croatian food. Like, you fish. Know. fish. Fish? Fish. What kind of fish? For me specifically, tuna steak, and my, and my family's looking at me like right now because that wasn't me a few years ago, and they're probably like, who are you lying to? But really, fish, because you can't get that in... You can't get fish in Canada? Well, you can, but it's not from the Adriatic, you know? Right. It's not the same. Most of the tuna's and not from the Adriatic, well, like, well, <laughs> <laughs> But okay. even like, on you know, na buzaru and yeah, yeah. stuff like that, it's just the way it's prepared. And on the mood, tell it in Espoteke or Brudet. I can't believe I didn't say Yanyatina. Ah. No, you, like, you had your chance, you've gone there. Sorry. No, sorry. Moving on, Eugene. Oh can't my get back. God. Um, back um, I don't know, like, I, I, so my, my parents obviously made a lot of Croatian food and we'd go to the Croatian sort of events uh, in Australia. Um, and so there's nothing really that I can say is, is completely different. What I do like is the restaurants here. Um, I think when you're eating in like a, a meat sort of grill place, you know, mm. with with that whole platter. Mm. I, don't, I don't think there are many places in Australia like they that. Do that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. They, they they have good seafood. They have a lot of probably better restaurants uh, because there's a lot of different nationalities. So you've got a lot of different types of Asian, from yeah. Thai to Vietnamese to whatever, yeah. and uh, you got random here. Um, you would probably miss the meat, and it would be the young tuna as well, pekka and stuff like that. Well, I yeah. have that's the thing. I have a pe- pekka in Canada. You have a pekka in Canada. Yeah, and where, the, and the ceramic. Where'd you, where, yes. where, where, where'd you get it from? Because a, fr- a friend of mine in Zadar, he exports them because nobody else was doing it. Well, people, people, people my order these things. Poor and... sister, one winter it had to be her carry-on. My dad wanted. He didn't want the steel one. He wanted the ceramic one. Wow. And that was her carry-on. And my dad built like the outside, you know, comin and. Yeah. And so every Christmas we have like, I mean every Christmas, my dad does that on yeah. weekends normally. Well, yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about wine in Rakia. Uh, first of all, wine. Everyone says Croatian wine is the best in the world, but what? You're from Australia. Do you agree? What's the, what's the, um, what's the, what's the sort of reality after the hype? What's the best, what's the best Croatian wine you've, you've tasted? I'm a peasant, so I, I, well, I know that. Okay, let's I drink uh, whiskey with coke in. So. <laughs> uh, I mean, as a Dalmatinka, not actually that great in wine, but actually, um, there's this one wine that I tried recently, Gospoja, and that one is kind of my go-to wine. I don't know what 
sort it is or whatever. Okay. It's white. I, I like white and the one that my parents or anybody's parents didn't make in the in the basement. Yeah. 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 Or in the garage. Bolna brač, on the river, there's a <coughs> winery called Stina. Ah, yeah. Plavac Mali, ask for a tour of the, the podrom. Yeah, that's great. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I love wine, um, but I'm not really an expert. Uh, I, I'm used, I grew up a lot with that um, cellar wine, um, yeah, yeah. you know, from Zagoria, yeah. like yeah. Uh, Kiselo. Yeah. You know, where I go with my cousins and we take all the grapes and uh, we are in the production of the house wine, you know. Mm. So I'm really a lot of uh, used to drink this because my dad yeah. is a huge f fan of this, so we only have this at home. Gemisht, you I'm know. I'm a bigger fan of beer, to be honest. And there's a lot of good, especially craft beers in Croatia. Yeah, there's a lot, uh, there's, yeah. and there's a lot of Banjuia, but we'll leave that <laughs> So, um... I've never met a Croat who produces rakia who doesn't say his rakia is the best in the world. And 99.9% .9 of those people are lying badly. And I've had some really bad hangovers because of it. <laughs> you guys have not met my colleague Ivan Cheme. Here we go. So uh, He's got the best one. You can either talk about the best rakia or your worst rakia experience. Oh. What if they're the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily. I, I've had more experience uh, with rakia, with my mum putting it on me when I fall over. and, and yeah. Or when I'm sick, I've got a fever and it's just all over me. Yeah, you know, like my I get better because it, just, it yeah. just stinks so much. And yeah. I don't know if I'm dying, I'd rather die of... Uh, do, you, do you think it does have medicinal purposes? Yeah. Yeah? Well, I mean... You turned uh, out okay, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, you know that, man. I'm alive. <laughs> No, but uh, you know, a lot of, I think my parents go into a stages where they drink it in the morning. And so when you think of it, it's an antiseptic, you know? Like yeah. if you're you know, drinking like medicine every day, yeah. bacteria, I don't know. Sounds, sounds... Uh, I feel confident in my doctor took a shot of Raki before going, you know, putting me under the knife. <laughs> yeah. It's antiseptic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. Sounds I mean, cool. Croats love them. They are, they have the most, the weirdest things they mix with wine I've ever come across in any Serbs. country. Serbs? They don't mix Serbs with wine, no. No, we love them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, red wine and goat milk. What? There's a, it's called Bikla. It's a, there's, there's a festival in Vergrat, it's a Bikliada. You have red, you have red wine and Coke, bamboos. That yeah. I know about. Yeah. Yeah. You have uh, pee, pee and white wine, which is called a Mussolini and Split. Yeah. Pee -pee. I mean, what's, yeah. The, what's the weirdest kind of wine combination you guys have had? Well, there was wine and then you put uh, olive oil inside, salt and pepper, Shit. and you dip toasted bread in it. Whoa. Red wine, uh, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> it must yeah, be a yeah, 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 thing. Yeah, that's a thing, yeah. <laughs> Shit. yeah. Wow. You Don't knock it to you, try. You guys must have been really come, come to Zadar one day. Come to I'm coming, come, I'm coming, <laughs> come to I'm coming to Zadar in two weeks. Um, <laughs> See you there. We'll have yeah. some red wine and toast. <laughs> <laughs> right, with, 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 with the best racker in the world. Yeah, they're going to be like, who the hell are these? <laughs> That's not us. Yeah. I don't know what they said. Yeah. Okay, so just to wrap up then, um, in a couple of sentences, like you're here, you're, you're obviously all very happy. What is it about Croatia for you specifically that makes it magical? Uh, I think somebody said we had to mention sex somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you think now it's the right this, time? Is this the cue? Or, uh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, it's pretty sexy. Did wife here. just show up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just listen to instructions, man. Um, what's the best thing here? Yeah. I don't know, freedom. Freedom. Yes. Yeah. Freedom. Yeah. The relationships. I just feel people are just much more honest and open. Like, you see somebody on the street that you know, hey, how are you doing? I honestly, my day sucks. And why? What happened? You see that somebody in Canada is like, weirdo. And then you want, or, my worst is walking into stores in Canada. Hey, how are you? Oh my God. Calm down. And they're not genuine. Here it's the genuine relationships. And some yeah. of the friendships I've had in the last few years are stronger than some I've had for a lifetime. And it's just the way that I can be honest with people and tell them how I feel and feel genuinely listened to. Yeah. I would, uh, I would agree. I like how people are a lot more real here. There's very little fakeness. Sometimes that gets interpreted as people a little bit cold, but they're not. They're just real. They're just telling you how it is. Yeah. Uh, I know. I like. Um, I like knowing where I stand. Okay. Yeah. Where do you stand? Currently, <laughs> I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> Maria. 
Well, they took the words out of my mouth. It's exactly how I feel. Okay. Uh, I would just like maybe to um, to uh, say something uh, new. The the nearness, like Croatia, is really rich. It's such a rich country. <coughs> so if you live in Zagreb, you can be like in in I don't know one and a half hours. You can lie on the beach already. You know. Yeah. Uh, then again, you can be on the mountain. Uh, you can be in beautiful Slavonia, you know? You can be like everywhere. Yeah. You can be in Dubrava in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got the address of that apartment, actually? I'm, uh, What's that? Have you got the address of that 1002, actually? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, final, final question, uh, very quickly. Um, favorite song, favorite Croatian song, and why? Favorite Croatian song? I don't know, I, I like that initial Kovac song, you know? Like, like the, no, I don't know. Yeah, the corny ones too. Um, what was interesting that um, when I watched some movies and um, like Ireland and stuff like that, and if you go back, like singing was a popular thing to do mm. for people when they're happy. So a lot of the pubs used to have singers, and um, and whereas in Australia, like there are some. Uh, clubs that say there's no singing or pubs or cafes there's no singing allowed for some reason and I didn't really know what that meant and then when you're in Croatia like when there's a happy time it just takes over people it? start yeah. singing yeah? and singing is yeah. encouraged because it's the greatest sign yeah. that you're feeling uh, happy I used to I used to get like in, in November in Yelsa on Hvar, I'd go, yeah. you'd go down and have a pint with your mate and then six people at the next table and you're having a conversation, suddenly it just bursts into clapper, and they're there for like two hours, and they're just singing away. And but it must be therapeutic too. Yeah, though, yeah, for sure. Know, like, yeah, yeah. It, like if you're singing, you're also getting things out of your system in a way. Yeah. But um, yeah. uh, I think if you look at societies like uh, that are very sophisticated, very advanced, they don't really have they, they, they bottle a lot of things in. But singing is something that you really you know get things out uh and it is a song it's free you know so yeah. uh, when you think about songs uh, every song really uh, just as long as you're singing you're happy you know? yeah. Yeah. got a song favorite song i've got a favorite song i like to listen to but the the answer you're looking for is what's your favorite song to sing and that's in a bar and that's if the dj says what's your request this isn't a song for me but it's uh you all a kada žena tulu mare. Not because it's my favorite. Yeah, that's why. That's, <laughs> that's why. That's why. And you put that on and if magic happens. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Yola. Thank I, you. What kind of magic has happened to Yola? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll save that for later. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, thanks so much indeed. Um, so thank you, Eugene, Mariana, Andrian, and Anne Maria. Um, these are four people from all over the globe. They're back in Croatia. They're living in Zagreb. They're loving it. So more and more people are coming back. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please subscribe to the uh, Devastated Sata 24 Hours YouTube channel, and uh, we'll see you again very soon next time. <laughs>